Here we're going to look at a mixed strategy solution. We had just looked at, uh, we're checking for a pure strategy. Um, we either used dominance or we used uh, decision analysis to figure out if it was a pure solution. If it's not pure, it's a mixed strategy. So that's what we're going to look at next. So we're just going to keep it simple and look at a two-person, two-by-two game. So each player has two choices. Um, we're going to introduce some new variables, P and Q. Um, Q is the amount of time that Annie will play uh, strategy one here. I'll put that in blue. All right, so that is Q. Q minus one minus Q is the percentage of time she'll play strategy two. Same with Bob. P, <coughs> excuse me, is the percentage of time Bob will play strategy D. And one minus P is the percentage of time Bob will play strategy J. So over time, they'll switch between their two options. So this is telling us how much time they should play each strategy. Um, just like any one of these game theory problems, the first thing we do is check for dominance. We can see that there's no dominance for Annie, there's no dominance for Bob, so we proceed. Um, just keep in mind with statistics, of course, Annie's choices represent 100% of our strategy. Um, so there is no third choice. So it's either Q or not Q um, equals 100%. The same for Bob with P. Our second step is we figure out Bob's probabilities for his two strategies. So first we take Bob's um, payoff that's Annie selects strategy one. So that's P times six, one minus P times 15, which equals Annie's payoff if Annie selects two, which is P times 10 plus one minus P times five. So that's what I have represented here. This time we just solve for P. You know, we factored through the 15 and the five. Um, we add like terms. Uh, we bring the, <coughs> excuse me, the P over here, the 15 over there. We get negative 10 divided by negative 14, which is a positive 0.714 or 71%. And our 1 minus P is just the opposite. So 1 minus that is our 0.286. So we have the two probabilities for Bob. Bob should play uh, strategy P 71.4% of the time. And he should put play uh, strategy J 28.6% of the time. The first thing we do is we find uh, Annie's probabilities. So it's set up as Annie's payoff that select, if Bob selects D. In other words, if Bob selects D, these are Annie's two payoffs here, equals Annie's payoff if Bob selects J. These are two payoffs. So we do Q times 6 uh, plus <coughs> Um, 1 minus Q times 10. So that's my if Bob selects D. Now if Bob selects J, it's Q times 15 plus 1 minus Q times 5. So that's how I set up the equation. Then I just solve for Q. You know, multiply the 10 and the 5 through, uh, bring the 10 over to one side, the Q over to the other, solve for Q. So Annie should play um, problem one 35.7% of the time, and she should do option two 64% of the time. So those are my uh, two probabilities or percentage of times Annie should uh, play each of her strategic options. Now we'll take a look at Bob. 
Okay, now we have to uh, calculate the expected value of the gain. It was easy with the pure solution because it was just the value that both players picked. But in a mixed solution, people are going to be playing uh, different strategies for percentages of time. So we have to do a little bit of calculation to get the expected value. What it is really is we start off with the joint probability and from there uh, we calculate um, the expected value. So to do the joint probabilities, we take uh, the, probability, the two individual probabilities and multiply them together. Like for the probability of 6, that's the intersection in 1 and D. So the probability of 1 is 0.357, the probability of, of D is 0.74. So we multiply those two probabilities together. Um, so the probability of a 6 is a little over 25%. We do the same thing for D, where we multiply 1 and J. So we multiply those two probabilities together, a little over 10%. We can do the same thing for 10, which is the intersection of D and 2. So the probability of D, um, the probability I'm sorry, the probability of 2, the probability of D, multiply them together. And finally, for J and 2. So those two probabilities um, give us a little over 18%. If we added up all our probabilities, just as a check, um, this should be 100%. Of course, if those are 100% of our possibilities, it makes sense that they'd add up to 100% probability. Finally, we can calculate the expected value of the gain. To calculate the expected value is just the sum of the payoffs times the joint probabilities. Um, so I've write, written the joint probabilities out as a second table here, um, just to make it easier to visualize. But, um, so what we do is we take the value and multiply it by its joint probability, so 6 times 0.255, 15 times 0 0.102, um, <clears throat> 10 times 0.457, and 5 times 0.184. So these are my individual um, values. I add them together, and the expected value of the game is 8.55. So in the long term, if we play this game long enough, it will uh, Annie will expect an average of 8.55, and that will be Bob's payout or the value of the game.